Management used standard cost to identify variances. Variances are the difference between total actual cost and total standard cost. If actual costs are less than standard cost, the variance is favorable. A favorable variance has a positive connotation. It suggests efficiencies in incurring manufacturing cost and in using direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. When actual cost exceeds standard cost, the variance is unfavorable. An unfavorable variance has a negative connotation. It suggests that the company paid too much for one or more of the manufacturing cost elements or that it used the element inefficiently. A variance must be analyzed to determine the underlying factors. Analyzing variances begins by determining the cost elements that comprise the variance. Let's assume they produced 1,000 gallons in the month of June and incurred the cost to the right or $55,000 in manufacturing cost. The total standard cost is calculated by multiplying the units produced, in this illustration 1,000 gallons, by the standard cost per unit, which is $52. So the total standard cost is $52,000. The total variance is $3,000, and that's the difference between the actual cost and the standard cost. And that is unfavorable because our actual cost exceeds standard costs. To interpret a variance, we must analyze its components. A variance can result from differences related to the cost of materials, labor, or overhead. The total variance is the sum of the materials, labor, and overhead variances. So we can explain the variance of $3,000 by analyzing our materials, our labor, and our overhead variances. Please consider pausing this video and opening the handout that I posted on Blackboard. It contains a summary of the formulas presented in this chapter. The materials and labor variance are the sum of the variances resulting from price and quantity differences. Companies sometimes use this matrix to analyze a variance. Note, the left side of the matrix is actual cost, actual quantity times the actual price, whereas the right side is the standard cost, the standard quantity times the standard price. The only additional element you need in order to compute the price and quantity variances is the middle element, the actual quantity at the standard price. An alternative method, which is my preference, is to calculate the price variance by multiplying the actual quantity purchased to the difference between the actual and standard price per unit. The quantity variance can also be calculated by multiplying the standard price to the difference between the actual and standard quantities used. Part of the total variance of $3,000 is due to a materials variance. In completing the order for 1,000 gallons, the company used 4,200 pounds of direct materials at a price of $3.10 per unit for a total cost of $13,020. The standard requires four pounds of material per gallon produced, so it should have only used 4,000 pounds of direct materials to produce 1,000 gallons. So we multiply four by 1,000. The standard cost of each pound of direct materials is $3. The amount that should have been paid based on standards is $12,000. The total materials variance is the difference between the amount paid, actual quantity times actual price, and the amount that should have been paid based on standards, standard quantity times standard price of materials. The total materials variance is $1,020. This is unfavorable because actual costs exceed our standard costs. The total materials variance could be caused by a difference in the price paid for the materials or by differences in the amount of materials used. We can explain this unfavorable variance of $1,020 by calculating a material price variance 
and a material quantity variance. The material's price variance results from a difference between the actual price and the standard price. The material price variance is calculated as the difference between the actual amount paid, the actual quantity of material times the actual price, and the standard amount that should have been paid for the material used, the actual quantity of material times the standard price. The material variance is $420, and that is unfavorable because our actual cost exceed the standard cost. The price variance can also be calculated by multiplying the actual quantity purchased by the difference between the actual and standard price per unit. The calculation using the alternative formula is 4200 times 10 cents or $420. Right, the $420 is unfavorable because the actual price per unit exceeds the standard price per unit. When calculating the material price variance, my preference is to use the alternative formula. The other component of the materials variance is the quantity variance. The quantity variance results from differences between the amount of material actually used and the amount that should have been used. The materials quantity variance is calculated as the difference between the standard cost of the actual quantity so the actual quantity multiplied by the standard price, and the standard cost of the amount that should have been used, so the standard quantity times the standard price for materials. The materials quantity variance is $600, and that is unfavorable. The quantity variance can also be calculated by applying the standard price to the difference between the actual and standard quantities used. In this instance, the calculation is $3 multiplied by 200 to arrive at an unfavorable variance of 600. Again, you can determine that it's unfavorable if you look at the actual quantity that was used is 4 4,200 and compare that to the standard. And you can see that the actual quantity used exceeds the standard of 4,000. When I calculate the materials quantity variance, my preference is to use the alternative formula. The total materials variance of $1,020 is the sum of the material price variance and the materials quantity variance. These variances help managers determine if they have met their price and quantity objectives regarding materials. Companies sometimes use a matrix to analyze a variance. When the matrix is used, a company calculates the amount using the formulas for each cost element first and then calculates the variance. The matrix provides a convenient structure for determining each variance. I personally prefer the alternative formulas. The cause of a variance may relate to both internal and external factors. The investigation of a materials price variance usually begins in the purchasing department. Many factors affect the price paid for raw materials. These include availability of quantity and cash discounts, the quality of the materials requested, and the delivery method used. To the extent that these factors are considered in setting the price standard, the purchasing department is responsible for any variance. However, a variance may be beyond the control of the purchasing department. Sometimes, for example, prices may rise faster than expected. There are also times when a production department may be responsible for the price variance. This may occur when a rush order forces the company to pay a higher price for the materials. The starting point for determining the cause of a significant materials quantity variance is in the production department. If the variances are due to inexperienced workers, faulty machinery, or carelessness, the production department is responsible. 
however if the material if the materials obtained by the purchasing department were of inferior quality then the purchasing department is responsible for this exercise you will calculate a total materials variance as well as a price and quantity variances the solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video